Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada as we have a big night of action in store for you and it's all brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated in association with the Mandalay Bay eBay Sports and Showtime. Well fans, at this time we present and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada as we have a big night of action in store for you and it's all brought to you by Top Rank Incorporated in association with the Mandalay Bay eBay Sports and Showtime. Well fans, at this time we present the first of our world title attractions brought to you courtesy of Gary Shaw Productions and sanctioned by the IBF President Marion Muhammad Supervisor Lou Pryluker. This is along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Skip Avencino. Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Robert Hoyle. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, Denny Nelson. And also from Las Vegas, we have Glenn Trowbridge, our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout, working in this his 22nd world title bout, Tony Weeks. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks with gold trim and fighting out of Detroit, Michigan. He weighed in at already 167 pounds. His record stands at 26 wins, one defeat with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the IBF number 15 ranked super middleweight contender. Please welcome the challenger known as Mr. Hollywood Introducing Ruben Williams. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the right corner, wearing blue trunks and fighting out of St. Petersburg, Florida. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 167 pounds. He is undefeated with a record of 18 wins, no losses, one no decision with 14 wins. Coming by way of knockout tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is making the second defense of his title. Please welcome the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, introducing the undefeated Jeff Once again, a referee in charge, Tony Weeks, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Tony, wait on Joe, right? Okay. Come on, Jeff! Hey, Jeff. Okay, gentlemen, you both received your instructions in your dressing room. Okay, right here is good, anything else is gonna be low. Right here is good, anything else is gonna be low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Let's go. As you immediately notice, the height differential, Williams the taller of the two, but as we close in on Lacey's second defense, Jeff Lacey, who has started faster of late, has for some reason been very reluctant to throw the jab in fights while he has no reservations in the gym, and it's a good jab. No questioning his powerful rider hook, which is where Reuben Williams comes in. How long can he keep Lacey on the outside with his jab, and how will Williams respond if Lacey really connects with one of his bombs? So here we go, Jeff Lacey in the blue trunks, and Reuben Williams in the white with gold. Williams, a boxer puncher, relies heavily on a power jab. New trainer Chuck McGregor, who recently took over for Emmanuel Stewart, says they've dramatically improved Williams' power in the right hand with balance and footwork. And they feel Lacey will be looking for Williams' overhand right the first seven rounds should it go that long. But he won't be throwing it. He says the key will be his jab. This is the, the talk of Reuben Williams. He's 
these first rounds are very important for Ruben Williams, obviously. He needs to do two things. He needs to, as you pointed out, use the jab to control this fight. But I firmly believe he needs to land something in the first couple of rounds that will get Jeff Lacey's respect. Now we wonder if Williams is quick enough to avoid Lacey's power to get out of the way of those punches. Will he telegraph? And will he pay if he misses? Now this is a big ring in this uh, at the Mandalay Bay and let's point out right off the bat very good work with the jab by Williams. I mean he's landing not everything's landing but they're good solid jabs. Oh my. Wow. But now Lacey goes to work and the crowd senses Jeff Lacey's power. Body shots by Lacey. And then back a straight right. He kept his head about him when he got against those ropes, Steve. He did not cave into the power of Lacey, at least with that first oh, no. onslaught. Stop, stop, what you like is his poise. So Reuben Williams off to a, a cool start under pressure. We approach a minute remaining in the opening round scheduled for 12. Oh, hands free, hands free, hands free. Tony Weeks with the instructions, the third man. He worked the, the Lacey Omar Sheikah fight back in the center. Here's that jab again. Again, it's not a probing jab by Williams. It's got some sting to it. And, and it's keeping him at bay, Al. And the other key is you see him doubling up with that jab. If you throw a double jab, it's going to be very tough for a puncher to get on the inside against him. That, of course, is where Williams doesn't want to be on those runs. Well, hands free, hands free, hands free. And a beautiful countering left hook to the jaw by Lacey. Williams threw a flurry and then all it took was one punch by Lacey to get his attention. And now a right uppercut to the chin by Lacey. You gotta be careful on the inside with Lacey. Not where you wanna be. Lacey was able to get on the inside against Reuben Williams at this point. It was the right hand that drove him back against the ropes and yet another. And yet during this whole flurry, you see Williams keeping his eye on Lacey and countering pretty well. And that would lead us to later on in the round. That right hand, not a monstrous right hand, but certainly enough to keep Lacey off him. Now, probably what won Jeff Lacey this round was at the end of the round. That was a very good counter left hook he threw. Um, and I think that last flurry at the end might have won Lacey this round. You know, Al, no matter who Lacey is fighting, he feels he has to be at his best mentally and physically because guys who are even ranked number 15, like Reuben Williams, will raise their game knowing this is his moment, his Super Bowl, his time to shine. Again, Lacey working the body. A whipping right hand by Williams, but one and done. Dan Birmingham had to like that sequence, uh, the trainer of Jeff Lacey, because there were combinations involved. When Lacey throws punches in combination, he's so much more effective, and he's capable of it. Yeah, they want uh, Lacey not only to demonstrate his prodigious power, but his boxing ability. He was more successful his last fight versus Shika when he jabbed and then ripped to the body. You know, Williams has fought 14 of his 27 fights over the 168-pound limit. That, when he weighed in, not now he's 176, but I mean he weighed in the, for the oh, hands fight. Free, hands free. So he's he's a little more comfortable at a higher weight, really, even than this. He's been as high, Al, as 192. Yep. He has really fluctuated. And as low as 160. He claims he's more comfortable now at 168, although, as you said, checking in at 176. And when he got down around 160 was when he got knocked out first round that was at the Joe Lewis Arena 42 seconds into the fight and he was just obliterated a reminder too and if you've seen Jeff Lacey fight before you know that it frequently takes two or three rounds before he starts to pick up the pace 
and his power is such an equalizer in the fights. So while Williams is definitely doing a very good job now with the, things like that jab and right hand, you have to keep in the back of your mind that Lacey is very good as you head into the middle round. This is a very good fight, though. This is a very entertaining and interesting fight between these two super middleweights. Something Jeff Lacey would like to change, though. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever going to change, Steve. I really don't. Wilbur Williams does not want to be on the ropes against the power of Jeff Lacey. There it is. A rocking left hook. A flurry by Lacey. Williams in trouble. A lot of heart by Ruben Williams. What a sequence. And Williams landed two fantastic right hands. There's another one, and Lacey's not backing up. Pulverizing shots by Lacey, Al. <laughs> Upstairs and to the body. Hey, this is one of the best sequences back and forth we've seen in a long time. Ruben Williams showing a great chin and great resolve. Bombs by Lacey, raining them. But you know, now Williams is oh, waiting oh, oh, oh. there. Ah. Wow, that was a fascinating round. Got himself trapped on the ropes, and Jeff Lacey did some very, very good work. What made this interesting to me is that Lacey landed big bombs and certainly hurt Reuben Williams with some shots. Williams had the presence of mind to land three or four unbelievable counter right hands, but Jeff Lacey just, you see him bombing. There's one right hand by, there's another one by Williams. And yet Jeff Lacey doesn't stop, continues to throw a variety of punches that land. Now, not everything was landing here, but enough was landing clearly to cause distress. There was another great right hand by Williams. What a fine sequence for both fighters, certainly better for Lacey. And because of the fact that Williams was fighting back, you couldn't call that a knockdown. Sometimes no. a referee would call that a knockdown, saying the ropes kept him up. Lacey goes right back to business. A right uppercut counter by Ruben Williams. Again, Williams on the ropes. You know, no matter what happens in this fight, I'm happy to declare Ruben Williams has shown he's a pretty good fighter. And of course, he was an excellent amateur, but he hasn't faced tough competition as a pro. And the one time he stepped up, as you pointed out, he was knocked out. One and two versus Lacey in the amateurs. His only win in the Golden Gloves, the National Golden Gloves. Lacey. Again, going to the body. Now upstairs to the top of the head, so he's really mixing it up. And then a countering left-right combination by Jeff Lacey. Good morning. Williams wisely gets out of there again, almost trapped against the ropes once again. This, this is a shootout reminiscent of when Lacey won the title against Sid Vanderpool. And I'll tell you what else Jeff Lacey is showing and reminding us of. He can take a punch. Less movement from Williams, you see. And that's a problem Hanford. for him right now. Lacey continues to try to cut down the taller. Reuben Williams, straight right hand, got through the guard by Lacey. And here's Williams again, trapped against the ropes. Same spot he was before. But he hits back. Another whipping right hand by, by Ruben Williams. Who would have thought that on the inside, Williams would be able to get something done? And he has, even though Lacey's probably again winning the round with his volume of punches. But hey, he found a home for that counter right. A beautiful right cross to the head by Ruben Williams. Lacey barely budged. Well, you got a bird's eye view of some of the best inside action you're ever going to see. Look at this exchange. Great counter punching by Williams off the ropes. Hansfree, Hansfree.
free. Stop, stop. I got you. I got you. Williams proving he is no slouch, no club fighter. Staying in there and then some against the champion, hard hitting Jeff Lacey. Although Lacey clearly dominated. on the inside. Okay. That's the only mistake you're making. Don't drop your ass on the inside. Keep them up high all the time. How you feel, Tim? Good. 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 Jeff, good. Jeff, when you're inside, break. Break and okay. break. Step out. Punch. Okay. Right here. Here, here. Water. He's trying to counter, so be careful. Come on. Big deep breath. Well, they talked about countering in the uh, Lacey corner. And you see, they want Lacey to take a step back and, and, and get his punches out there. When he's in that punching range, that kind of right hand is landing by Williams. And we see another look at it. Good short right hand by Williams. Wow. I mean, that, that's a, a short, powerful punch. But Jeff Lacey takes it in stride. Dan Birmingham over there also trains Winky Wright, which is why he's here. Close friend of Jeff Lacey's in Birmingham, the 2004 Trainer of the Year. His fourth pro fight with Lacey after being with Jeff for over 100 amateur fights. Chuck McGregor would like to see Reuben Williams fighting from the outside more and talk about comeback stories. McGregor, Williams trainer, surviving a heart attack, a couple of strokes, triple bypass to get back into the sport. He's a great, really a well-respected, nice guy in, in the boxing game. You know, the interesting thing about Williams is, and what you said, McGregor wants him on the outside, he also showed ability on the inside against Jeff Lacey. And that is the kind of thing that will keep him in this fight. Good body work. You know, we talked about Lacey working the body, Steve. It could ha uh, have rewards in three or four rounds that he's doing that. Yeah, go to the body and then take the head is the... Uh the old adage. Williams is boxing very well in this round. And the crowd getting behind the underdog. That comes Lacey on the charge. It has been pretty much all action, non-stop. Through three plus rounds. Lacey just teeing off. Missing. Back comes Williams with a heavy right hand over the top. We've seen Jeff Lacey in troubled waters before. But right now, Ruben Williams in round four getting a lot going. Now here's Lacey with a left that starts a flurry. But Williams again showing his medal. But even those have to hurt. Williams missing there, both times. And Lacey getting Williams on the ropes. In the last round, they spent a minute 26 along the ropes. Probably a minute 26 too long for Williams' trainer's liking. And you know... But once again, Lacey nearly just hardly flinched. You know, for all their protestations that he can't fight on the ropes, guess what? He's fighting pretty good off the ropes, even though he takes punishment. But he's better off in the center of the ring. But this is like suicide against Lacey. And but what a right hand by Williams. The only problem is he's doing it in the wrong place. Should be doing it on the ropes. Don't stop dead. The whole fight, keep yourself moving. Same movement, baby. <laughs> breathe. 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 
In the center of the ring and on the outside, Williams was excellent in that last round. The jab, the straight right hand landing very, very effectively. Lacey trying to shake that off. But Jeff Lacey was able to, to push him against the ropes and land some good shots. There's the jab that Lacey has not been using as much as he would like in this fight and was able to get a little work on the inside. These exchanges on the ropes are fascinating. For all intents and purposes, you wouldn't think Williams could even survive in this posture. And yet, not only has he survived, in some instances, as you see there, he has flourished. Bordering on amazing that Williams has not been down in this fight. Round five. Williams taking some vicious blows to the midsection and the head, and yet offering back, like right here. Very pesky. You, you know, Williams claims that the reason he got knocked out in one round uh, was that he went down to 162 pounds. He couldn't do it. We always assume that's an excuse by a fighter. Guess what? Maybe it's real, because he's taking big punches. You know, he's up at, at 176 at fight time, 168. Uh, when the uh, weigh-in happened. So perhaps at this weight, he is a handful because he's being that tonight. Yeah, he was saying he had a, a nightmare with the weight and also uh, an honest answer. He just simply got caught. Take a look at the press row uh, scoring. William Trio uh, has it the biggest disparity. William from Boxing2005.com, Robert Morales, the LA Daily News, and Steve Kim from MaxBoxing.com. I have it even at 38-38. And this fight, for Williams to get credit in this fight, you're going to have to really watch him on those ropes. You're going to have to know what punches are blocked and what punches aren't blocked. And, of course, that's up for interpretation, clearly. But there's no question that in the center of the ring, Williams is more effective. But Lacey drives him to the ropes and keeps him there. Good body work. And that could pay big dividends for Lacey. Wow, that, those are excellent body shots. And an overhand right by Reuben Williams. But the busier of the two is the champion. There's a left uppercut that sent Williams' head back. Vicious shots by Lacey. With evil intent. And you wonder what's holding Williams up. Again, a barrage. And yeah. the right uppercut. Epifanio Mendoza knocked him out in one round. How do you do that? <laughs> Great question. After what we're seeing here. Good round for Lacey, though. Even though some counter punch is landing by Williams, Jeff Lacey's been affected. Back comes Williams out, as you say that. But just one punch. And no follow. And a left hook, a sweeper. Lacey missing with the right, countering shot by Williams. And then Williams goes to work. And he gets the crowd going. How you feeling, kid? Uh, you good? Yeah. Yeah, you can fight the fuck around. He's let him. He's right here. He's got swollen in. Williams against the ropes, a familiar posture in this bout. It's been a mixed bag for him, but not good here. Tremendous body work by Jeff Lacey, which he wants to do for later in the fight, and that body work spawned some good work to the head on the ropes as well. Although, you see the countering still coming from Williams. You wouldn't have expected this bout to be fought so much as that uppercut, and he would follow after that with another uppercut. But the jab straight right hand for Williams. Certainly we thought it would be a big weapon for him, and man, he just kept using it at the end of that round, and it landed. Jeff Lacey has had to have gained the respect. Right here from Reuben Williams, the way he has held up. Again, Lacey just pounding away. 
Yeah, there's no question that Lacey has to respect Ruben Williams and, and, and know that this guy's a pretty good fighter at this juncture. Now, when Williams, when, when Williams is using that jab in the center of the ring, it's effective. If he could stay in the center of the ring, Steve, he, Williams would be in good shape in this fight, but either because he can't or because Lacey pushes him against the ropes, that's when he gets in that posture. And, which isn't to say he doesn't do some good countering there, but clearly it's not the way to beat Lacey. Now, you got to believe Williams doesn't want to be here against the ropes. He just keeps getting forced over Jeff Lacey, the power and strength of Jeff Lacey. And, and he might not have the, the, the stamina at this juncture in this fight to, to keep the moving and movement in the center of the ring. Well, against Epifanio Mendoza, when he got crushed in that obliteration, it was up against the ropes in similar fashion. Now able to, to turn Lacey around, but stays outside now. And there's the jab coming from Ruben Williams. You know, they thought, Dan Birmingham thought Jeff Lacey was a little stale in his last fight because they only had a week off before they went back into training after the Vanderpool fight getting ready for Omar Chica. And he's not stale tonight. He's, he's performing very well. It's just that so is Williams. Oh, a big right hand to the jaw by Williams that connected. This is as action-packed a fight as you would like to see. I mean, they are throwing great punches and landing a lot. Oh, it's great up the cut by Lacey. Another big right hand by Williams. And Lacey again showing his beard. Oh, what a whack by Williams with the right hand. And what does it do? Nothing. Some of those rights by Williams are a little slapping. Not all of them, but some. Again, the uh, close range, the end fighting. Williams using the elbow and shoulder a little bit. But it's Lacey scoring here. Oh, man, what shots by Lacey. What's holding Williams up? Literally saved by the bell. Look at me for a minute. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. How you feeling? Good. You have a headache? Watch it. After the bell, please. Mm -hmm. No, that was clean. That was no, it's after the yeah, bell. Okay. No, it's clean. Oh, okay. Take a deep breath, baby. Oh. Open up. Okay. Moving oh. on. Well, to say Jeff Lacey was effective at the end of the round is a, a gross understatement. He threw very good, compact, and accurate punches once he got Williams against the ropes here. It all starts with the uppercut, which he found a home for a round or two ago. And then he threw some very, Let's after this, some very exact combinations that would hurt Williams after Williams had countered very well off the ropes. Here's where he started to really nail him and landed some monstrous hooks and those uppercuts. And had this been earlier in the round, certainly Williams would have gone down. Barring a miracle, this just looks like a matter of time for Lacey. He comes out in furious fashion. Frenetically throwing punches, Williams doing all he can to fight back. Blasting away monstrous shots by Lacey. Tony Weeks looking very close. And Williams keeps throwing back, so Weeks can't stop it. Fight back. It could be one punch, though, to end this. Unbelievable. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Finally, Tony Weeks. No arguments. Saving Ruben Williams from further okay, battering and punishment. Joe! I'm coming to get you, baby! Give me a mouth. Referring to Joe Calzaghe. Jeff Lace is a warrior, and so is this man. Hold on. I'm good. You know where you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you? Oh, baby. Okay. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. You had him, baby. Baby, you look good, baby. Well, I told you. You had him. You heard him, you came right out there. I just got on his ass. You look good, baby. How's he feeling?
The best question of the night was to Reuben Williams. Do you know where you are? You know, Reuben Williams performed exceptionally well in this fight, even in losing, and probably raised his stock as a super middleweight. Too many headshots, huh? Yeah, too many. He's in good shape, but I was ready to stop it. Real deal. Good new real. And that's the man who offered up. I want to unify them belts. The headshots. Super middleweight championship. Unify. It's never been done before. I'm yeah. looking to do it. Look at Will. There you go. You got your people. And then, he's amazing. Well, that is his immediate goal, to unify the title. But again, not a lot of marquee names at the super middleweight top. That is why he needs that fight with the Kalzaki. Trust your condition, sir. I get a, such a nice guy outside the ring. He was talking he a lot of junk. He is that's what you like. mean. This way you do all your work. I don't do no talking. I let me do the talking. Jeff Lacey very anxious to get things over with in this fight after he had hurt Ruben Williams. He jumps out at the beginning of the round right after Williams, sensing that that barrage was too much for him. So look how quickly he got across the ring and how quickly he got on top of him knowing that this kind of barrage could cause the fight to be stopped. It is, to my way of thinking, astonishing that Ruben Williams was able to take this kind of punishment. Jeff Lacey is as hard a puncher as you'd ever want to have hit you at 168 pounds, or maybe 175, and yet Williams was able to hang in there, never did actually go down, and Tony Weeks ultimately, as you hear him saying, fight back, ultimately had to stop this fight. And he did, by the way, a very good job of that's stopping it, that's him. That's it, that's it, that's That's a warrior. And you know, with Jeff Lacey, as we look at it again, we talk about the fact that he's vulnerable. Uh, you can get to him, as Reuben Williams did early in this fight and really throughout it. But man, you have got to get Jeff Lacey out of there, because if you don't, his power will ultimately come back to hurt you. And that's what it did in this fight. His power is the equalizer in any fight he's in. And when he gets you in trouble, he is a very strong finisher. We've seen it in a number of fights, and we see it right here. And you know, Jeff Lacey has deficiencies. He's not the greatest defensive fighter on the planet. Uh, sometimes he doesn't put all his punches together. And you can say all you want about him. He's a skilled young man who punches so hard he could beat anybody, anytime, if he hits him. The only wonder is, how will he hold up? How will that chin hold up against the guy who can really well, he's like been, Calzaghi? I, well, we'll see. He's been hit by some guys, but Joe Calzaghi has to take his power, and we know, having seen Calzaghi against Mitchell, we know Calzaghi can be knocked down. All right, let's get it up to uh, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 47 seconds in round number seven. A referee in charge, Tony Weeks, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and still the IBF super middleweight champion of the world, Jeff Lachuk Lacey.